it is uh, one of the oldest wineries in, in Napa Valley in, in California. I think in some ways people might be surprised to to hear that you know, there's this 154 year old winery you know, up in the hills above Calistoga. That in and of itself is is interesting, right? You got my attention. Absolutely. Uh, and then with this property, uh, we have, uh, we've existed all that time. The property has changed hands a couple of times. There was a, a terrible period of time called prohibition in this country. <laughs> Had it not happened, frankly, you know, the California wine industry would have a much deeper history th than it does have. So for about 50 years, this winery was effectively closed. I speak for the generation that came before, Presumably the SRAM and, and oh. those, those folks enjoyed it too, yes. although they weren't making sparkling wines. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up here, so I, I know that my parents were really, really excited about what they were doing. I'd like to touch on that for a moment. Do you remember when you first came here? No, well, I was, my parents had already bought the property and had uh, done the first vintage 65. I was born in uh, at the end of September 65, so. I remember the the uh, the when the man landed on the moon in '69. That that was a big that was a big deal. Oh, I've, yeah. I've kind of this recollection that you know something significant you know had happened. And uh, but the first thing that I probably really remember related to the the brand Schramsberg was then in '72 when Nixon went to China, President Nixon, and it was the first meeting of a an American and a Chinese leader. Maybe I don't remember all those details. I've come to learn them. Yeah. But how exciting was that for you know our family and for for our our winery team here to um, have had that wine, the Blanc de Blanc, served uh, in Beijing. House. It was actually served in Beijing, China, first. in the People's Republic Hall. Yeah. There was a week-long series of meetings between Nixon and Kissinger, and then uh, Chairman Mao and, and Zhou Enlai, and the Vietnamese War was still going on, right? They're on one side, we're on the other. And and um, we didn't even know that this was coming. And then, boom! You know, as, as my parents would tell the story, you know, Barbara Walters would explain to you know, the, the TV audience that a little-known sparkling wine, the Shramford blank to blank, had been served. So I, I remember that. I remember that happening. What do you do? You recall the impact that that had on your lives when something of that global nature, like truly, probably put you guys on the map to a further degree than you had been already. Yeah. No. I mean, if you want to put numbers to it, I know in '72 we would sell a thousand cases of wine, um, and then by the end of that decade, 1980, we would sell 15,000 cases of wine. So there were some nice, you know, that led to, you know, a, a nice burst of growth for, for the winery. Um, you know, the, 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 the size of the facility was, was uh, able to you know, you know, produce that kind of, of a quantity, that kind of a jump, but you needed a, a market, you know, you needed a market. And so they, uh, they were able to capture that, and and definitely that that moment helped. Um, the there was a a real energy in this valley that I that I remember and feel. There still is, uh, but you know, thinking of my parents and their their closest colleagues, you know, whether it be the you know, the Carpies at Fremark Abbey or the the Travers at Mayakamas, um you know, the, the Mondavis or the, the Chelichefs and the you know, Martinis. I remember them spending a lot of time with, with these people, um, not just like work time, but also, you know, fun time, you know, party time, dinners. Uh, and, and they would, um, they were all, they were all working towards the same goal of building a, a name for this, this Napa Valley uh, wine industry. I would love to hear about the, I guess, the enthusiasm that your parents had because you've got some incredibly delicious wines that are mm -hmm. named after both your mother mm -hmm. and your father, mm -hmm. um, which is a huge honor, A, but the fact that you're also producing these lovely reds, I think I've seen up to 93 or 94 points um, in ratings. It's just, you know, doing that sparkling the sparkling um, aspect so well, and then kind of segueing about was it was it ten years ago? So we started, uh, and you know, you sometimes you don't think about that. 
the wine industry requires you know that much more planning and and, and uh, uh, investment um, of time be, before you, you can start generating any any sales results. So we started replanning the vineyard property here, specifically this Diamond Mountain property, uh, in 1994. So that was what now 22 years ago, wow. and and with that we we started slowly. Uh, some of it was experimental, um, but in in making wine, sometimes your experiments are production scale. <laughs> <You know, laughs> yeah, it's not doesn't mean a hundred thousand cases, but you know there there might be you know if this works, we'll sell it, right? Right. Uh, as, as opposed to we're just doing an experiment over here and, and, and we'll see what happens. Absolutely. And so by the time we got to 2001, we had more of the vineyard replanted and we really did have some larger scale batches of wine that we're making. So we would bottle our first vintage of the J. Davies Dime Mountain District Estate, you know, uh, J. Davies Estate Cabernet. And that was uh, named after my dad, Jack. My mom was alive at the time. My dad had passed away, but we thought that that would be a great way to honor him by by you know, kind of naming the the state cabernet after him. And then, as we've evolved more recently, uh, you know, my mom passed away what, eight years ago now, and uh, in this year we're now releasing the J Davies. Dime Mountain District Cabernet, the the Jamie, the JDB's Jamie. Jamie and so yes. the Jamie is just the the best 300 cases, you know, from the property. That obviously it would have to be a little more premium priced, and um, yeah, it's exciting. We actually have her signature, just simply her signature, Jamie, on the face label. Uh, if you recall from our sparkling wine lineup, there's one bottle we call the J Shram, that is the Jacob Shram signature. Yes. And so all of the the branding associated with the sparkling wines relates to that Shram and Shramsburg era and and, and, and and then as we're as we delved into the, the red wine program with some Pinot Noir as well now where you know the heading is Davies Vineyards and then there's inside of that are, are more of the you know Davies generation you know names if you will. Kudos to you on Thank that you. the expansion of the brand and uh, and the honoring of, of your family that is uh, very cool stuff. Started out with a, a really solid vision, a, a mission, if you will, that, that uh, on the sparkling wines that, that we 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 continue to, to carry forward. It does require us to investigate and, and experiment, sometimes on production scale, uh, each and every year. It's led to a, a really a tremendous array of vineyards. You know, maybe we talked about that earlier, but to me, that's if there's anything that we have that uh, you know, maybe we could consider better than the next guy. Instead of that, we are working with 120 different sites. Wow. And, and then we can make the individual batches. Many of them are quite small. Um, we're learning that much every year, but then we have this really deep range of you know, base wines, which to blend. And, and so as we, we're now moving into the red wines, it's a slightly different focus rather than blending from all the vineyards. It's more, how can we, capture you know a really exciting character out of one specific vineyard and so therefore we need to plant a range of clones and and you know produce a, a range of components representing the different barrels in the different corners and, and try to hit it uh now you've got a pretty incredible team here as well that supports your efforts yeah. and um and i was reading about the the longevity of your staff for the most part uh, can you tell me a little bit about what some of your secrets are to having a team that is so happy and well entrenched within the organization? Mm, they're always happy. No. <laughs> uh, but I think it's that um, at the end of the day, the Shramsburg property, you know, this place that you know, the Shrams founded all those years ago that my parents you know, discovered, re re revived uh, with, with a team. Um, it, it is a special place. I think that our the the product that we make, you know, frankly, the the how fortunate might we be to to focus on um, that? There's a business aspect to this, right? Yes. Uh, we have to. The business has to succeed. I guess we're a little bit like artists or, or chefs. You know, we're we're, we're creating a a product that 
the world doesn't have to have, but it, it sure is exciting to uh, to be able to focus so much energy on on on, on crafting beverages that, that are really tasty, right? I mean, this is uh, how fortunate it might we be. So I think that the this I can speak more from the winemaking perspective. So I went to Davis and I worked in other wineries, and then I know how winemakers often feel. You know, it's like this this would be a great way to make a living, right? Absolutely. We could, we could be professional winemakers, really? <laughs> awesome, right? And Definitely. so there, there's some of that that must rub off on everybody who, who works here. Um, and then uh, I think you know, we've attracted a, a relatively passionate group of, of people who, who uh, um, you know, bought into this notion of, you know, and is it a, maybe even a little bit of this lifestyle? You live in Napa, you may have a, this isn't, this community, frankly, isn't, uh, you know, these, and there are a couple of other winemaking communities around the state and, and to some degree in other, a couple of other states. Um, it's a really nice little slice of, of you know, the, the world. We've had a few employees who, you know, kind of finished their careers, you know, 40 some years later, you know, all working here. That's um, incredible. That's a long time. Yeah. It is a long time. <laughs> that, that part's long. So uh, it, it's 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 good, and um, we're I, I just feel like we have a good team, and we're we're all excited to to keep moving it forward, and, and maybe by adding some of the red wine, um, and, and another brand, you know, we we've, we've been able to uh, you challenge ourselves a little bit more here recently with with with, with something new. That's it's another way to keep people's attention, excitement, enthusiasm. If you can tell me a little bit about the future, your hopes for the future with the winery, with the business, and with your family. My my hope is that you know we just gradually, step by step, you know, evolve and, and, and grow grow the business. Uh, it's got to be healthy. It's got to be healthy business. Um, that. Uh, you know, my kids, uh, my 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 nieces, my nephews. You know that that the, there'd be a another generation in the family that would really be excited to take it on and, and get involved and and think it's also important to just enjoy. Sometimes it's important to enjoy the moment too because it does it does just the moment fleets away, right? It, it just it keeps moving along. So we're we're uh, I guess we're trying to do both those things. You're building for. You're building for the the now, and you're building for the the future simultaneously. Um, but I think you know the 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 one thing we don't want to lose sight on is is that initial vision that we started out, and and so I see us making you know, really ultra premium quality products. You know that that that's the the larger producers, the more corporate brands will uh, will be more successful. At the lower price points and with you know, more of the with, with really broad based production, uh, we're we're going to focus on on the you know that 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 ultimate level of quality in, in a small way. In a small way. In know? a smaller way. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like I it's know big, it's bigger than it once was, but it's still <laughs> relatively small. Yeah. What is one thing about Hugh Davies that not everybody knows, and they should? Um, well, I guess, you know, in some ways I'm probably most proud of, um, at this stage, you know, with my wife and my three kids, right? That, I mean, that's, that's the, feels like that's the best thing I've got. That's so awesome. I usually, uh, I, I really, I've enjoyed this, this chapter of life where, you know, you get to be a dad and, and, and you know, raise a family and I'm enjoying that. And um, I, I don't think that you know, even though we were all children, right? And we all had parents, you don't really know what that's quite going to be like until you're there oh, yeah. and, and, it's, <laughs> and it's happening. And, and um, uh, you know, I guess with some trepidation, you, you go into that. And then, after, I don't know, at least in my experience, that um, it's just, you know, how much, how much fun is this, right? How, 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 how do we get so lucky? To be able to to do this, you know, what a gift! You know? And so, um, for me, that's uh, that's important. 
It's been wonderful spending a little bit of time with you and getting some insights on the organization, you know, your family, your parents, the wines you make, and uh, the incredible contribution you're making to, to a lifestyle. 